I was late. Hello, us. Accidentally Hi. wrong logged in on the wrong grid. <laughs> So, uh, let's see. Get down with our usual agenda here, the quick and dirty stuff. So, uh, outstanding viewers that are out there now, inventory messages almost certainly will be promoted to the default viewer on Tuesday, unless something unexpected and spectacularly bad happens over the weekend. Uh, we won't be doing anything on Monday because Monday is a Linden Lab holiday. Uh, and uh, so that one gets rid of a bunch of old, gets rid of the usage of a bunch of old inventory messages, replacing them with the corresponding current AIS operations. Uh, you should plan on merging that promptly, or at least, you know, in uh, with seriousness. Sometime in the not too distant future, we will remove support for the messages that were removed, the old UDP inventory operations from the simulator. Um, and they will stop working. Uh, that will most likely be sometime in Q4. I will try to come up with more certain dates for you in the next couple of months. But uh, that should not be neglected. All part of our effort to make inventory more robust and reliable and all that. Uh, that is going to break our obsolete platform viewer, but we never promised that that would keep working anyway. And we are not going to backport anything to that. So some inventory operations will stop working on that viewer. Uh, well, the crash rate on XP is through the roof anyway. I don't, I don't know how anybody puts up with it. Um, okay, there is also the maintenance branch, which is also doing reasonably well. That will probably be promoted um, not too far behind the inventory viewer. You never know, but that's the thing. The other one that will probably move from project viewer to release candidate status uh, next week, I would expect either next week or the week after, would be the visual outfit browser. We have one or two issues left that we'd like to see fixed before that becomes a release candidate, but uh, those are getting attention, so I would expect that to move forward fairly soon. Um, that The other ones that are in flight and out there now are, of course, the Bento Viewer, which we are trying hard to get to release candidate quality. Uh, and should be moving ahead pretty soon, uh, which is which is good. And the Rift Viewer, which uh, we got a Windows build out a few minutes ago. It's in QA, and if everybody keeps their fingers and toes crossed, we will put out a Project Viewer update shortly. Uh, no, I'm not planning on sending rifts to anybody outside the company at this point. 
In fact, we can't get enough of them inside the company. Oh, it'll merge into the main branch. Yes. It will, it will very definitely not stay separate. We have not got what it takes to maintain multiple versions. Uh, support for the Vive is something we'd like to be able to do. Um, uh, let's see. Anyway, uh, I think that is what I had for things to report. So the floor is open. I don't understand the question, could I? Well, clearly, if I don't understand the question, I can't answer it. I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, you mean like the, the, the you mean the room sensor thing? Ah, uh, I am, I am aware of that. I, I mean, since we haven't even started on Vive support at all, much less that, uh, I have no predictions on when we might or might not be able to support that. I was playing around with a different avatar shape the other day. I must have messed it up. Will there be support coming for languages written right to left? Uh, it is not currently on the roadmap. If anyone would like to uh, 
volunteer to do all the work in the entire user interface toolkit to support that, by all means, have at. If you can get it through QA, we'll take the contribution. Uh, my understanding, and this is not my area, um, my understanding is that the difficult parts of supporting more texture memory is the, is detecting, correctly detecting how much you can get away with using on any given card before you start having problems. And we have a lot of problems on many cards uh, with uh, especially lower end ones if we tried to use more. And so uh, it is, and, and we, we no longer have a mechanism for conditionalizing based on what the name of the card seems to be. And we're not putting one back. Uh, so I am more than happy to work with anyone who wants to work on that. In fact, I'd be delighted to have a contribution that does that. Be aware that you're going to be subjected to a pretty brutal QA. So um, I'm, I would I would be absolutely delighted to get a contribution for that. Obviously, I'll need a contribution against the Second Life code base, not some other viewer's code base. But 
You will be a hero to a great many Second Life residents. Uh, I am okay with a manual setting if and only if when it fails, it fails in a way that makes it clear that that's what the problem is and that you have to go do something about it. If it just does random weird stuff to your viewer and that has to be one of the things you guess might or might not fix it, that's not really good enough. Yeah, well, the plan is that we will only be supporting a 32-bit viewer on Windows um, in the future. Once we have 64-bit support, we will be the 64-bit will be the only thing we'll do on either Linux or the Mac. And incidentally, we won't be focusing on Linux for the first release. We will be focusing exclusively on Windows and the Mac. And if it happens that we get a we get adequate contributions to get a 64-bit version working in time to do that at the same time, we will. But if if not, then we will just not ship a Linux viewer at that point and hope that somebody helps us catch up. Yeah, I'd, I'd be perfectly okay with having it be conditional. I mean, you, we can detect at build time whether, you, you know, whether the, or at runtime, whether you've got a 32-bit or 64-bit version and conditionalize that setting based on that. that. That'd be perfectly okay. <laughs> yeah, but nobody's talking anyway. Uh, any other issues? I hear crickets. Yeah, actually, the uh, that lab chat thing did put us onto a couple of interesting lines of investigation. So we're working on it. That's good, because it was getting really bad, and there's some regions that are still pretty bad, but I think it's uh, it's not replicated uh, across the entire grid. I think it's just specific grids that are having the issues, and uh, I'll file the JIRA to have them restarted, and usually that takes care of it for a while. Um, so. Yeah. Uh we're 
we're uh, we're working on new uh, on, on porting the simulator forward to a newer version of uh, the operating system, and in the process, we're hoping that we can get some of our performance analysis tools updated. So maybe we'll be able to get a better look at that as we go yeah, forward. That should work quite a bit better. By far the most significant factor, I mean, if you're having region crossing issues, by far the most significant thing you can do about it is get rid of scripts. Don't try to carry running scripts across, script, across region boundaries if you can help it. That's the number one thing you can do. And it and, can have a huge impact. And the physics scripts, that's another thing I've noticed it's been limited down. Uh, that was one thing I, that was supposed to have been mentioned. Um, but I guess it failed to be mentioned. Uh, I've noticed things last physics, year. Physics, yeah, physics scripts? What are physics scripts? Uh, it's the uh, basically just where, like a vehicle, say a boat, would um, have multiple areas that would work um, in tandem with each other. Um, and the physics, when I get an error, it says cannot be used physics scripts over 69. And I had no idea what that was about, but that was a new issue that came along um, when you lowered the instances that were allowed by scripts in, in general. Um, so I wasn't sure if those were linked together or if that's just something going on with the scripts themselves. I'm not familiar with that particular issue, but I can easily manage, uh, imagine that large vehicles that had scripts running in different parts where one script has crossed the reason boundary and the next, and the, and the one at the other end of the vehicle has not, um, could easily have problems, for example. Yeah, and the error is showing so, uh, in single simulator. So just to, just to initialize the physics, uh, I guess the physics weight is just too heavy for the, for the craft and it just won't even well, initiate. It, yeah, it's I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that error. Have you, have you, have you posted anything about that one? I sent something in, but I don't believe it's even been looked at yet. But I will refile it um, just if, to see if, if it's dropped off. If it's in bug and just hasn't been triaged yet, then we'll 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 get to it. We we didn't do the uh, we didn't do a, a complete pass this week on the bug triage because a bunch of key people were missing on that day. Oh. It's summer, you know. It's, oh it's, yeah. People, people just vanish periodically. Okay. So if you haven't got if you haven't got the if you haven't got the right person there to if if we haven't got the right set of people to look at an issue, then we just skip it and wait until they come back. Okay. So it, that may be what happened to yours. All right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually, um, I mean that. That uh, raises a legit point um, on limits. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that particular limit. I'm not even sure what it means, but that's okay for the time being. One of our ongoing activities that we kind of try to pick up every now and then and, and iterate on is to look for limits, the values of which were set a long time ago, and which maybe we have headroom to increase now. And that's how we got things like allowing more groups and allowing more, um, I don't know. There are several things that we've made, made bigger lately. Uh, and, uh, and, and we're sort of doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not a high priority activity. It's the sort of thing that we get to when we've got a few free minutes, you know, gee, maybe we could make this bigger. And sometimes what we do is put out some tests where we where we allow something to be bigger and see whether or not it, it's causing problems. And then, and then we decide whether or not to, to do it. Um, if you 
are frequently encountering, or if your support uh, process is frequently encountering limits that uh, that seem as though they might uh, it might be good to increase them. Uh, I'd be I'd be more than happy to entertain those suggestions. More historical messages for premium. You mean uh, stored chat messages? Is that what you're referring to? Historical messages, you're talking about the cap. Uh, high script memory limits. See the conversation about script memory causing region crossing problems. Go back in the transcript a few minutes. Yeah. The higher we make script memory limits, the more trouble people have with region crossings. It's a very clear correlation. Um, and if you saw how it all worked, you would understand why. There was one thing I would like to add um, where you have added the uh, or talking possible future limitations for scripts on an avatar, uh, the script weight. Um, one thing I've noticed in my region, in my partner's region, is that one small parcel on the entire sim is using 100% of the sim resources and they're only like 6,000 square meters. Is there any plans or is there any way that there could be a, an algorithm that could limit resources according to the parcel size like you do with uh, like you do with sims? That's, that's a fair question. The answer is I don't know. Uh, it's more likely that um, one of the one of the things we have been doing a, a fair amount of lately is reviewing um, particular calls that people are are making that are heavyweight uh, and trying to throttle individual calls. So, uh, it, you know, uh, what was the one we just changed recently? I forget. There, there, there are a bunch of them where we're where we've been putting throttles on particular calls, and or uh, adding some some extra sleep time to things that that are particularly uh, resource intensive. Um, it would be more likely that we would try to analyze what's going on and and and, and whether or not something like that would be an appropriate change to make. Um, so, I mean, if it's a consistent problem, documenting it somewhere where, where somebody could look at it would be, would be possibly helpful. Um, skipping back here, there's been an uptick in chat lag the last week or two. Uh, the only change we've made to chat in the last couple of weeks is that we we made the change that causes uh, if, in group chat if someone gets removed from a group, they also get removed from the group chat in a way that does not rely on the viewer. Um, I don't think we've done anything that is performance related. I know the, uh, I should try to find the metrics. We've got a metrics report on chat lag, and I should go review that. Oh yeah, we did. We did impose new limits on the number of scripts allowed in objects and attachments. Thank you, Orly. That was one of the things I was trying to think of. Uh, SL initiated script resource counter. I don't know what that means.
Well, hopefully the animated tails problem is well addressed by uh, by Bento. We actually did we we actually did a performance test pile on kind of informal check uh, yesterday to see whether or not having lots of people doing lots of bento animations with tails and wings would cause performance problems, and it absolutely did not. So that was a, a really nice result to get. And we had a lot of people there. So and everybody was waving their wings and tails furiously. You know, a lot of people are really wanting that as well. A lot of creators. Yeah, well, that that stuff is actually moving along pretty well. We've we've got a couple of a couple of bugs that need to be stomped out, uh, and a couple more, a couple of final, final, final decisions about about what we'll support and what we won't. But it's coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ryder, we should we should dig up the, the make a note, would you? We should see if we can dig up the stats report on chat lag and see if the numbers really have changed. I think numbers are good if we can get them. Yeah, not, not much more will happen this afternoon. Uh, I have I have not gotten any settings for max complexity. I, it's theoretically possible for me to get a pretty good number for that on our viewer, but um, oh, for max complexity, I was thinking uh, advanced lighting mode. I know that you always want that one. Um, user settings for max complexity. Uh, we don't actually report that to the simulator. We only report how frequently, we only report whether or not somebody is over, not what the limit is.
Uh, I can do fresh viewer stats after the holiday. Be happy to do that. <laughs> no, the the max complexity does not get sent. At least not part of the as part of the avatar uh, reporting. What gets sent is what I think your complexity is and just a boolean of whether or not it's over my limit. Uh, it does not report what my limit is. So, I mean, you could sort of deduce it by looking at enough samples from the same avatar, but uh, we don't put the number in there. Right. Do we have any idea when you will promote VLC to release? Uh, I expect, I hope, I'm sorry I didn't include that in my list before. Um, I hope that we will have a release candidate version of that next week. Um, and then how soon it goes to uh, the default is still up in the air, but of course, once it's at release candidate status, it's fair game. Um, we will still be using QuickTime on the Mac on that version. We will not be using it on Windows anymore. Um, in the future, we will, uh, in the 64-bit project, we will get rid of direct use of QuickTime, uh, even on the Mac, and we'll replace it with VLC just so that we're doing the same thing everywhere. Uh, so the trick with .mov media is that it turns out that VLC notes, that MOV is a container format, right? So it's not a, not a well-documented container format, but it is a container format. So what that means is that when you get an MOV file, you have to open it and look inside it, and then that will tell you more about the format of what's inside it. And the format of what's inside it um, might be different depending on what it is. That is, there are many different flavors of .mov files. Um, and there are some forms that VLC figures out how to play. There are even more forms that the standalone VLC client knows how to play, but the plugin we're using does not. Um, and so essentially the answer is if you have a .mov file, it may or may not work. It is not guaranteed to work convert it to an, to an mp4 and then we'll just support it yes if if libvlc will will play it then we'll play it um, i am not going to discuss concerns about licensing at this point. We believe that our viewer is not going to be violating any licensing terms. Uh, and you will have to make your own judgments about what your viewers are and are not allowed to do. Uh, I'm afraid Linden Lab cannot be in the position of providing advice on that.
Oz, is there a timetable for uh, for the removal of Flash? Do we know yet? Uh, as far as I know, we already don't do Flash. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. I think, I, I, actually, it's a subtly different question. We are not shipping a Flash plugin. If if I'm, I'm if I if my memory is correct, we are not shipping a Flash plugin. If you choose the right Flash plugin and you install it in the right way, and your platform allows it. CE, the CEF viewer may find it and use it. Uh, but we're not going to release it, and we don't consider it supported functionality. If you happen to make it work, that's fine. We don't object to that. Uh, we are not going to attempt to provide instructions on how to do so, and we are not going to accept the fact that it doesn't work as a bug. Yeah, I I realize that there's there's a backwards compatibility problem there, but we don't think it's uh, we don't think it, it it's worth the very considerable effort it would take to, to attempt to support it and, um, and at the same time protect users from the security problems we think it has. Yeah. Switch to HTML5. Use the standard, Luke. Yeah, we will be doing more updating and improving of our media capabilities uh, as part of the 64-bit project, or at least that's that's the plan at this point. That's the sort of that's the sort of element of a plan that could be dropped if it would make a big difference in the schedule to drop it. But uh, at the moment, that's the plan. So everyone, keep your fingers crossed that things go smoothly. Uh, we're going to have people, we're going to have more people to devote to that work. Again, after the holiday, we expect to be back to making serious progress on it. So hopefully we'll be looking at a, at, at least a project viewer uh, in July. 64-bit project viewer in July. That's that's the target. We'll see if we make it. Anyway, so we seem to be running out of topics. Last call.
All right. Well, let me know how that goes with uh, texture memory. I'll be more than happy to to uh, subject it to the appropriate abuse if if you get to that point. And everybody have a good July 4th holiday, if that's a holiday for you. And uh, I will see you all in two weeks.